It's early September 2017, and I'm, I'm excited. We're at the start of the salmon season in Howe Sound, and the first to arrive, the pink salmon, they're coming in right now. So I've come to see the pink salmon at the lovely little river that flows between the great granite walls of Stuwamish Chief and the fast-growing town of Squamish near the head of Howe Sound. This is a big spirit place. The river flows into Howe Sound at the ancient village of Stotmus, where the Skohomish people have lived for millennia. The Skohomish know Howe Sound as Atkatsum, a name they give it when they paddle its waters going north. For millennia, the Skohomish peoples have greeted the return of pink salmon, whom they call Lawachin. Nearby, the ever-busy Sea to Sky Highway bridges the Little River. The Skohomish call it Sawaota, meaning Little Creek. The river is also called Stawamas. Meters from the highway, the river flows in its own quiet world. Down a staircase of pools and tumbling riffles. Pools and riffles are the natural architecture of streams created by the native genius of winter floods, scouring deep holes here, but building bars of gravel there. The river flows through a tangle of floodplain forest. And is shadowed by granite walls. Side channels braid through the riverside forests and are pockets of rich life. I have come to see the salmon and welcome them home. After a long summer drought, Sawaota is running low and clear. I am here to learn the stories of the salmon and of the river and use the eyes of my camera to visit their underwater world. The pinks are making their way upstream, riffle by riffle, and the pools are filling with fish. And it is the way of pink salmon that they return to Howe Sound streams only every second year. Pink salmon are also known as humpback salmon, or humpies, for the distinctive humps in the backs of spawning males. Females, on the other hand, retain their sleek salmon shape. I see them clustered in sheltered pools beneath trees and root balls toppled from eroding banks. And they congregate too in pools below riffles that hold them back. I am just dazzled by their beauty and their seemingly effortless grace as they play the river currents. I poke upstream and find them spawning in a small side channel. The thin streamlined backs of the males rise like sails out of the shallow water. I watch a female with the energy and drive that must spring from her ancestral DNA, dig and dig and dig the gravels into a shallow nest with thrusts of her tail. Nearby males jockey, shove, chase and bite, struggling to hold or gain position beside her. The fighting can be really vicious. And then, at the moment the female lays her eggs in the nest, the males rush in to fertilize them. My camera catches a remarkable moment. With the eggs laid in the nest and a cloud of sperm swirling, the female sweeps the gravel to cover the eggs. The newly laid eggs have many hazards ahead. Some are swept by currents from the nest and are easy prey. 
I wander back to the main channel where I watch an energetic dipper search underwater for stray eggs. Wow, I need slow motion just to see the dipper's quick gulp. Nearby, mallards graze for eggs right in among the spawning salmon. And just downstream, there's a flock of gulls in the river. I watch one, just mesmerized by how adept it is at finding one egg at a time. I head up a back channel and find a litter of headless salmon carcasses. I know that both bear and wolves typically just eat the brains of salmon, gorging on their rich fats. As it turns out, I only have to wonder a short while before I figure out who it is. Autumn salmon runs play a vital role for bears that need to fatten up for their long winter hibernation. Once the spawn is complete, the pinks only live a short while. In the spawning beds, new life and dying are so close together. But the salmon live on. The nutrients contained in their bodies, brought here from the far reaches of the North Pacific, spread throughout the river, nearby forests and estuary seashore. Telltale markers of these salmon nutrients can be found throughout the web of life around Howe Sound. And so reminds me that we live in salmon forests, along salmon streams, and beside salmon shores.